My name is Charles Matthews, and I'm here today uh, with Lebohan Ketlo, aka Lebs Skywalker. Uh, Lebs is a transformer who has been in the ad agency uh, world. Um, he has worked at a content bar. He was the uh, editor of Soweto Live, which is uh, pretty much a one-person show. Uh, there he did editorial photography, kind of everything, got the whole thing going up and running and successful. Um, and then uh, more recently, Lebs had a major transformation. He decided uh, he was going to become a full-time photographer. Welcome, Lebs. Um, tell hey. us who you are. How's it, see? Who is Lebo? I think that intro basically um, introduced me very well. Lebo Khan Tseto, a photographer, multimedia artist, um, and overall, like, a transformative being in a way. I think I've always encapsulated that in everything that I do. I mean, like, I've changed aliases so many times now. When I started out in high school, when I was writing poetry, I was called Verbal. Um, and then when I finished my trick and I started performing on stage, I, was, I, I went by the name Unorthodox. Um, and when I finally came to being and after I did engineers, which was the biggest, I feel like it's the, it was a big break for me into adulthood and working in a corporate environment somewhat. Um, I started like looking inwards and Lab Skywalker was born. Um, so when I moved to Content Bar, I started working there. Uh, yeah, the photography and the art and the poetry started like colliding a lot. Yeah. Um, so for the past like almost two decades, I've been battling with it. And now I, I, can, I, can, I can finally stand on a title and just call myself a multimedia artist. How do you make sense of your world? Um, because not only have you had many transformations, um, you've had to deal with tragedy and perhaps the biggest tragedy has been the loss of your father. Who, um, you know, yeah. are such an amazing artist. Can you tell us about your father, please? Ooh, uh, my dad, uh, an amazing, amazing human being, uh, came into my life very late uh, into my, my teens. Um, met him around my early teen years, um, changed everything. Before I knew him, I was always the black sheep of the family. My family is filled with um, engineers, electrical engineers, and coming from, so, from, from Springs in Guatemala, um, engineering was the thing to do in a mining town, you know? Um, but I always had an itch to scratch to to sketch to to perform the performing arts have always been there you know what i mean the visual artist has always been there but it's but like it, it didn't feel right because of where i was but when i finally met him it made sense it clicked that oh this is where it comes from you know i'm not such a black sheep after all you know i i, I inherited what was right with me through him um, and we fought a lot <laughs> about the artist in me. She just didn't want me to be to become an artist. I remember the the one conversation I had with him, and he told me that like he doesn't like the struggling artist sort of like persona uh, or, or or idea, uh, and he doesn't want that for his son. And like I had to fight him back and be like, but this is who I am. This is who I've always been before you, before I met you. You know, so I can't just like back away from it. And ironically, when he passed away, that had to take a back burner. I just couldn't sketch. I couldn't paint. I couldn't perform. I couldn't. Everything just reminded me of the loss when it came to the visual artist. Um, up until recently, when I, I, I met the love of my life and, and everything came together from love shared as it sounds literally like love freed me freed the artist freed the photographer freed label you know i could finally call myself without having identity crisis because i didn't belong to the club because my dad didn't marry 
my mother and I couldn't call myself Tetlu because it is my mother's uh, uh, surname. But now it, it's come full circle through love. I've, I've, I've found who I am and it's, it's a beautiful space to be in. There's a guy called Dave Duarte who I admire and I once asked him what story is and he said to me story is the struggle uh, to resolution mm -hmm. and um, as I speak to you I can hear you know at times you like thick with emotion you know um, yeah it seems in your story that that transformation is painful and it's hard and it's challenging you know to become another person to leave what you know you yeah know what I mean? like an editor and just yeah. to become a, a photographer is hard you've got to start the hustle from the beginning tell me about the hard stuff yeah. i mean tell us about some of the rewards yeah um i start from childhood uh with the hard stuff um Something that I, I, I feel like it is a, a separate platform which I'm I'm working on, uh, coming from an abusive childhood, uh -huh. um, and like that coming into my teenage years, I was very isolated because uh, for the longest time you think that it's your fault being abused, it's 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 what you did and whatever you know what I mean. You carry that as a child into your childhood one of the biggest hardships, do you know what I mean? And then finding poetry was another hardship whereby you come into being, you start writing because you're venting for yourself. Mm -hmm. And now you have to have a struggle where you have to perform it or you have to share it with the world. Sharing pain, I feel like is one of the, the most hardest thing to adjust to. And once you adjust to it, you have to sort of like find a balance where you don't, you're not sharing pain all the time and then it looks like it just blew me i remember like when i was uh, during my performing years uh spoken word there's a few places that actually banned me because they said my work was too dark yeah. all the time yeah. do you know what i mean and i and, and i remember telling one of like the um the venue owners that like i can't i can't speak i can't perform i can't write about love when i've never felt it yeah. i write from what from what i know yeah. i write from my from my surroundings until I feel it, I can't talk about it. And that's being, you know, it's not actually like being an artist, you know, when you can't draw from your environment, when you have to be, you know, uh, uh, lie about things that you know nothing about. You know, um, it borders on science fiction. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then like that, that was the, the hardship through my teen years. And then meeting my father was another hardship where I had to now, be at peace with who I've always been when I've been trying to hide that person and I've been trying to run away from that person. You know, the artist, the, 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 the abused kid, the, I, I found new, I had to adjust to, to being this new person and accept who I am, another transformation. And then while I was tackling having a, a father in my life, which came with its own hardship, because we didn't know each other, we had to learn each other, and there was a new kid coming. And my first, uh, my, my 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 brother from my father's side, um, it, it, that, that, that's another hardship. Yeah. And then he passed away, just as we were sort of like molding this thing that we could call a relationship. Um, and that came with, I feel like that's the that's one of the the most daring and the most painful things I've had to deal with because all my life I didn't belong. And now when I found somebody that I felt like made me belong and feel like I have a place on this, on this rock, it has taken away. And between 2003 and basically 2010 or 11, my world just like, it crumbled. You know, I was just this angry person. Like I just felt like the world didn't do me right. Hmm. You know, why can't I find happiness? Why can't I be? Why can't I? Why can't I? You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was all those things, and it made me angry. Like all the time, I only realized now in my thirties that I was I was an angry teen, and and that's why like most of the time I couldn't connect with anybody like fully. 
you know? Um, and then <laughs> relationships. And then I went through a relationship that I felt like I belong, but that relationship was, was just me trying to belong. Mm. You know what I mean? I never had shit. And then finally meeting the love of my life, readjusting again. Mm. It's, it's like transform transformation is, is, is this, is this like you imagine, imagine being in a cocoon and you are this big. And then you have to transform into something this big, a butterfly. You have to shed your skin. I can only imagine how painful that is. Can you imagine? Like you get pain from a little cut. Yes. Now you have to shed the whole skin yes. and you have to become this whole person. You know what I mean? I mean, like a soul, a little soul that was tormented that I was. And now I had to come into being. I have to be, I had to be this person that is transformed from love. Yes. And it was painful. I think that was the biggest transformation for me when I found out that I actually deserve happiness. I deserve love. I yeah. deserve everything that I, I, I desire. That transformation was the transformation for me. Yeah. Because with that transformation, I could break walls. That yeah. was the reward for me. Yeah. You know, finding love, finding my place in this world, being at peace with who I am. Yes. Like having somebody love me that way so that I can love myself that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I noticed in I'm, I'm a bit of a blabber. No, no, I love I love it. <laughs> what I notice about your work, and as you're speaking, I'm thinking yeah. about your work, is um that when and I consume a lot of your work because I love your work, um, is that your work has such depth in range. Yeah. That um you in your work, you go to mm. places of extreme kind of grim dark. One feels such emotion. But then um, the other part of your work that uh, you capture is you capture kind of moments of extreme happiness, moments of birth. Um, you know, there's pictures of Shaw Majorzi uh, performing on stage. You're capturing ecstasy in, or in, in a way. It's like what really astounds me about your, your uh, visual work is kind of the huge kind of depth and range, you know? I get a sense that it's, um, it's, it's kind of really catalyzed in your work and your art. It's, it's the duality of, of everything that inspires most of my, my artwork, whether it be through the lens or through a pen or through like a brush. Yeah. Um, everything has its opposite. So light and day. Um, pain and joy yeah. uh, and having these superpowers um, that is poetry, that is photography, that is uh, uh, um, art. I feel like I have sort of like a three dimension medium that I can portray the duality in its fullest. Yes. So, uh, and, and I think that's why I've never been able, for example, in, in photography, most photographers would like to specialize in one field of photography, whether it be wedding, whether it be portraits, whether it be uh, landscape or whatever. But like I've never been able to, to, to stay in one sort of like uh, a sphere because yes. I feel like I have to represent my life. I've always drawn from my life. I've always been drawn from what I see. I've always drawn from emotion. Yeah. Um, and, and it has to show in the work. Yes. Whether it be poetry, whether it be photography, whether it be whatever I'm doing, yeah. and yeah, it's just it's just capturing life in its in its fullest. You know what I mean? Whether it's dark, whether it's bright, whether it's it's in between. Sometimes it is. You know what I mean? When you feel jubilation and pain at the same time, it's yeah, it's it's life. But you're telling a new kind of story, which I'm loving, and um, <laughs> I'm particularly thinking of kind of your science fiction edge. You know, because you yeah play with science fiction and you play with a, an Afro future, which is very much yeah. science and science fiction. And, um, you know, you're melding kind of new looks of Joburg with, um, you know, uh, 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 machines in the background that yeah. are futuristic. And they're uh, photographing kind of men in like these space suits on this kind of yeah. panic edge and things like that. And it looks like a whole new kind of... <laughs> uh, where does that come Yeah. Science fiction has always been my escape. 
I mean, I remember even from a, a young age, I used to like just watch everything sci-fi, whether it be cartoons, whether it be Star Wars, whether it be whatever. Like it felt like I could take myself to another world. I could, I could leave the pain. I could leave the worries. I could do whatever. You know what I mean? There, I could be happy. There, I could be a superhero. There, I could be the most powerful man on earth. There, I could be the happiest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. When it when when I when it came full circle when I when I when I'm telling you about like when I when I had to like come to terms with who I am through love, that got melded into my sci-fi. Uh, like I'm, I'm a cyberpunk like like fan in every way, you know what I mean. And I started thinking of because like science fiction is always looked at in movies like it's it's in the US it's in it's in it's in it's in it's in the it's in Europe and whatever but we've never seen we've never looked at Africa or South Africa in a scientific like dystopia or or futuristic dystopia you know what i mean and that's when Mzansi 3000 was born mm. you know what i mean um what would Joe be like in 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 the year 3000 what will so it would be like? What kind of people would be living there with the with the climate? Like there's um there's a there's a photo that I there's a composition that I did of uh, Joburg overtaken by huge storms. Uh, it's basically like in a desert, you know, a uh, scorched earth. Um, what if climate change it, it really gets that drastic and Joburg is is surrounded by desert? What will it be? How will people live? What is the Pansula or in the year 3000 going to be the street hawker mm-hmm. in every corner of Soweto? Will they have a cybernetic arm? Will they be using uh, technology to, to sell these foods? Will they be using hover cars? Whatever, you know what I mean? The, fu- the future is, is so multidimensional and so freeing that like uh, my, my, my work always tends to, to go towards it, always tends to to lean or gravitate towards it because the now you can do, you react to the now, mm-hmm. but you can, you can, you can also, you can almost mold the future. The future belongs <laughs> to those who build it. And I think you're building the future, the future. Do you get what I'm saying? Build it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think a really important part of identity is imagining ourselves in the future. Yeah. Mm, mm. I fully, fully, and I fully agree with that uh, because Look, uh, I, again, it's the duality. Yeah. You can't have a future without acknowledging your past. Mm. You can't have a future without working for, for, for without building it now. Yes, yes. There's always a duality in everything that we do. But the future is the one, is the one present that we can actually like look on and, and find hope. You know, I, whenever I have a bad day, I always look at... Uh, Tonight, what am I going to be doing at the end of this day? I'm going to be with the, uh, my, my lady, and that makes me happy. If we're having a bad day, what is going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow we can change it. So tomorrow always gives me an excuse to look beyond the pain, to look beyond the hardship, to look beyond the, the struggles of, of the hustle. This is an interesting but very, very, very energizing feeling and concept to just like work towards the future. Thanks for the time, Lips. It was great to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Okay.